welcome back to the channel I'm in an undisclosed area as you guys can see there's some mountains behind me I can't tell you anymore where I'm at because I need to get on board with doing my travel vlogs I've not been doing them and we have been traveling a lot so and if you haven't noticed I haven't done a lot of car reviews lately because I just don't go to dealerships anymore and there's no cars out there but that's not what this video is about this video is about three reasons why you should not buy my setup if you don't know this is a ram 3500 it's a 2019 has a high output comes in eisen and if you're new to my channel be sure to subscribe because i think this video is going to be pretty good if you are in a market for a ram or if you just like to hear truck stuff because this is going to have a lot of good benefit of show information so let's get into it now i used to hate this transmission and I did a video on why I hated it, so if you want, I'll put it at the end of this one so you guys can check it out. But I've changed my tune because I was ignorant at the time. I didn't understand what I bought. Now, because I've mentioned, as I said, we are traveling full time. We do pull a 40 foot fifth wheel. I love this transmission. However, a lot of people will not love this transmission. So my first point, the reason why you should not buy this truck with the high output Cummins and the Eisen is because this transmission is a medium duty transmission. I got crickets just now, huh? So why does that matter, right? Why does it matter that it's a medium duty transmission? Well, here's why. This truck and its transmission shifts really hard and it's very, very, very slow shifting. It's not smooth, it's not refined, it's none of those things. It is a medium duty transmission. And at the time, the only reason why I bought this truck was because I wanted the bragging rights to say I had a thousand pound feet of torque. Doesn't mean that that power, that 400 horsepower, that thousand pound feet of torque is gonna translate to really good performance. All that means is when you're under load, you will have the best towing truck on the market. And I mean that. I've driven the Fords with the 10 speed, I've driven the GMs with the 10 speeds, absolutely amazing trucks. I will not say anything bad about any of them because they are doing a great job when it comes down to towing. However, when it comes down to this truck, this Eisen is amazing. Ram states that this is 64% stronger than the 68 R fee, but that's again, only useful to you if you tow. I was supposed to do a video probably about a year or two ago with one of my friends, but we just could never get our um, schedules to line up and he's since sold his truck. But we're gonna do a drag race with the Eisen and the 68R fee and I want to show you guys, because I think this is true. I wanted to show you that my Eisen will get spanked by a truck with less power and less torque. And the reason why is because of the transmission. Now, if you were to hook up a trailer to both of those two trucks, you could even put a little bit more weight on the Eisen I think the Eisen will take out the 68RF without even trying. Because where this truck comes to life is when it has that deeper first gear and second gear over that 68RF. And that's my first point, so let's move on to number two. So I have in my hand a repair order, right? So my second point before I start it, let's go through this real quickly. So back in January of this year, I got my Eisen transmission serviced and all they had to do was change the filter the gasket and the fluid now i will note you do not have to change the filter at 30,000 miles that filter is 113 dollars is that right hold on here i lied i lied it's 107 dollars you don't have to change that until 60,000 miles but you have to change the fluid every 30,000 but the way i see it why not just change the filter while you're already there? I think that it's just counterproductive to change fluid and not change the filter. I don't care how good the filter is. However, with that being said, this service was $565. So obviously my second point that I have written down here is it costs more to maintain than a 68 RF. I have my truck in full wheel drive right now. I don't know if you guys can see this dust, but it is so dusty out here. But um, let's talk about that for a second. The Eisen has a 30,000, it's two year 30,000 fluid change. And then every 60,000 miles, you have to do the filter. Now, if you are looking at a 68R fee, 
you don't have to change that fluid until 60,000 miles. And I believe that's for severe duty. You might be able to change it at 120,000 miles if you're just one of those guys who just like to have an HD truck, you're gonna lift it and you don't ever plan on towing. Or if you do tow, you only tow once a year or twice a year and it's just not under load that much. So no matter what you do, if you get the high output in Eisen, you have to do a 30,000 mile service. And on top of that, every 60,000 miles, you have to do the filter. It's $600. Now I've heard of people paying $800 but whenever I go someplace, I act as if I'm poor. Like I say, hey man, like I really need some help on this service. Like, how much? What's the best deal you can give me? I mean, obviously, I'm gonna buy Mopar parts. You know, I, I'm just a poor man, unfortunately. I, I try to get a deal on anything I buy. So they did cut me a deal. Now I probably could have still got $50 cheaper at my personal dealer, but I went on ahead and got it done because we were traveling. And like I said, I think I might have said that earlier in this video. I just wanted it done. I just, my, my conscience was like telling me to do it. So I said, let's just knock this out. So I did it and that is my second point. You know, you're gonna pay more money, no exceptions with this transmission. And I know a lot of guys probably don't do that fluid change. They'll probably just skip it and go to 60,000 or maybe they just don't ever change it, I don't know. But I will tell you, if you want your car to be reliable, you gotta do that fluid change. You just have to do it. So getting the 68RF is a better option if you don't plan on towing. My first point was this is a medium duty transmission. If you're under load, this transmission is absolutely amazing. The torque, you know, the torque handling, just the overall just feel of it. Like, I mean, you can really feel the engine and transmission like connected better under load. However, when it's unloaded, the 68RF is the way to go, especially if you are on a budget and you don't want to have to do a service interval every 30,000 miles, that's almost 600 bucks. All righty, so have I talked you out of buying a high output Cummins? I hope not. I hope that you take my points that I've made so far and go do your own research, obviously. But my third and final point, and this is what my channel's about. I mean, most of my channel is about towing and most importantly, payload. Now, if you are looking at a single rear wheel truck, this is gonna really benefit you. Now, if you don't know this, maybe some people don't know this, you cannot get a high output Cummins in the three quarter ton. Most guys know that, but if you're new to this brand, you cannot get the high output Cummins and Eisen in a Ram 2500. And I think the reason why is because the Eisen weighs about 150 to 200 pounds more than the 68 RFE, which robs you of payload. If you don't know this too, the three quarter ton Rams are still stuck at that 10,000 pound GVWR. So right out of the gate, once you start adding in options and a few things here and there, or even like a little bit higher trim package, you're just at 2,000 pounds on payload. So there's no room you know, for you to have this gigantuous transmission that I have if you're already so limited on payload. So that's my third and final point. The Eisen transmission is so much more heavier. And if you're looking at a one ton Ram 3500, you're gonna lose about 150 to 200 pounds of capacity by selecting this option. And that's really important to even me. I, I will say, if I knew we weren't gonna go full-time RVing, because I kind of had it in my head that we would like to do it, and we did make plans to do it before I lost my job, and that's why I, I really wanted to have the best towing truck. I really wanted this truck for bragging rights, personally, but I really did want the best setup. And this transmission is made in Japan. It's owned by uh, Toyota and another company. I think it's Seiko or Siki. I don't know how to say those words. But I strongly think that this is probably the most reliable transmission, even above the Allison for the most part, especially the 10-speed Allison. The 6-speed is probably on the same level as the Eisen, personally. But if I were to buy any truck and put my money on reliability, I think that this is the way to go because based off of what I've heard from other people, whenever I go to truck stops, whenever I go to campgrounds, whenever I ask guys who have four or 500,000 miles in their trucks, nine times out of 10, they say that the Eisen is pretty, pretty reliable. And most of them had either very minor problems or none at all. And the same thing goes for the 68 RFE. A lot of people, you know, remember the 48 RE transmission, which sucked. That transmission did suck. And there's a lot of information. I'm sorry, I'm going off road here. I'm about to go up a little bit of an incline. You're gonna probably see it out back. I'm just having fun today, I'm sorry. 
This is what unemployed people do who have nothing else better to do. Here we go. Ah, so nice. I love that. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I was saying, the 68 RFE is a lot better transmission. Do not let people who've never owned any brands, even if it's Ford, Chevy, even guys that come on my channel, I always ask them if they own a Chevy or a Ford, if they say that they've had issues with the 10-speed, or did you just hear that from a friend of a friend or whatever the case is. As I've said in my videos, I don't know of anyone personally who has had problems with the Ford and the GM transmissions. However, online, there's a lot of videos of it on YouTube of people saying they've had issues with it or had to replace it. Uh, Toe Piglet was the one guy who does hot shot who you know has used Fords in the past he uses Rams and he has said that that 10 speed transmission is trash and I'm just that's what he said in his video and I'm just basing that off of what he said but I've never owned a Ford long enough for me to give you any kind of recommendation of whether they're good or not but what I can tell you is they have like a 150 mile 150 K mile service I would not go 150 K miles on that transmission now I can only imagine how expensive that transmission service is because whatever fluid they're using is probably really, really, really expensive. And that's probably why they have it so far into the, you know, 150K range so people don't like throw up in their mouth and swallow it because of how expensive it is to replace that fluid. And I, again, I'm speculating, but I don't trust any fluid to go 150K miles. And I would recommend anyone who has a Ford not to go that far. I would definitely change that fluid a little bit sooner than that. But on that note, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and I will do some more updates on this truck as they come. I am out of factory warranty. I mentioned that in another video and I will do an update on all of this too for you guys. So thanks again for watching and I will see you really soon.